Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Well, anyway, so thanks to thanks for doing this. I got to hear the record last night and completely blown away. You guys have really outdone yourself this time. Seriously, this is. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I'm, we're all really we're proud of it, which is great. Yeah, you kind of hope so. And uh, you know, I've never talked to anyone who said otherwise, and I know that's it's had to have happened somewhere in there, where someone just put out a record. Where like, you're not, oh, it'll do. <laughs> Or you're just so sick of it that you're like, okay, you can't really see the woods for the trees anymore. You know, you're like, oh yeah, it's, it is what it is. I mean, obviously you're like, at some point in time, you, you know, I think you go through stages where you like, you love it and then you don't want to listen to it. And, you know, I, I'm at a, I'm super proud of it. We recorded it and I had to take a break from listening because it was just, you get so microscopic when mixing comes around, Mm -hmm. you have to listen and then mastering and then sequencing and all that and we've listened to it so many times and i just it's like i just lose the plot after a while yeah so it's like i took a break took a took a break after that and then listened to it again and was just you know with fresh ears and i think i think i read that you guys like did this one even faster than usual and i I don't know if like you if you if you were working on deadlines or not but that's is that a part of for you because you could just keep tinkering with that forever otherwise yeah for sure i think that the the process in which was expedited this time around, I feel like, was more the writing process than it was the recording. Oh, okay. Because we were in the studio for, like, I mean, the studio was about, it was, like, probably from January to April, May. January to, like, May. So it was, like, five months, which is usually right around the time. That's how much time we usually spend in the studio, mm-hmm. give or take, if, you know, a week or two. But so many of the tracks were actually written in the studio. Which is stuff, you know, something that we don't usually do. So it was like, okay, some of those songs, you know, were birthed in the studio, and and we're also um, we also sold off on them. You know what I mean? Uh, within that five months, which is something that we usually don't do at all. Mm-hmm. We will write a song and we'll stick around. You know, it will it will take on many forms. It will live there. It will live in you know whatever. It'll live in a box or live in the on the iPhone that it was recorded, the idea was recorded on for a year or two and then we'll come back and, you know, we'll revisit the song and then we'll change it some more and then then we'll settle on it. So it's like, you know, usually it takes us a lot more time to, to settle on, you know what I mean? On an Mm -hmm. idea or to just sign off, sign off on a song, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, Bob Dylan's really, really famous for, you know, writing multiple versions of one song and getting them out there. I mean, do you guys record any of the other versions? Do you have any, like, are we waiting for anniversary editions to hear some of the other incarnations? There could be other versions, but usually when we go in the studio, like, we'll record the version that we're ready. You know what I mean? The version that we record is we don't do different versions. And we have, you know, thousands of mini discs and certain, you know, sessions if we want to record ourselves live. But that's not, it's definitely not, like, it isn't. It's not a pro session by no means. Right, right. But there, you know, there are. There's one song that we've never. There's a few songs that we've never released that I feel like we have a few different versions of, and that's just because we couldn't decide on what we were happy with. Yeah. It's because we just kept changing our minds so much, and so that actually ended up biting us in the ass in the long run, and we never released it because we just <laughs> we killed it. We killed the song so hard that it's like it just became such a piece of shit <laughs> that we had to ditch it. Right. Well, so this time around was nice in that way. It was very refreshing, and I felt like it was, I don't know, I was i was happy to go in and write a song and not be too heady about it. And that's kind of what I did with my album that I released last year. Was That was sort of the concept, was to not be heady about things and like to go, sit down and write a song and to not change it 50,000 times. And whatever I was, you know, whatever mood I was in or whatever I was capturing in the moment, to just let it be that. And if I wasn't happy with it... Two days later, it was like kind of a rule to where it was like, well, you were happy with it two days ago and maybe you're just in a different mood now, but I wanted to capture. I was very, very into capturing the moment and going off of my first, you know, my first instincts and not second guessing myself because you get into that game and it's such a dangerous dangerous game yeah i mean writing such a philosophy as far as how to do it because you know it, i don't know if you go through it because at one point you're like no this is what i'm going to do i'm going to go with my gut and these are how the songs are going to be and you know first impression best impression or whatever and then you know it's it seems like <laughs> another part of your life let's you, you know it's no this song we've got to work on this for the next year or i don't <laughs> you know. yeah i mean it's like 
obviously it, there's no rules mm-hmm. either way. It's like if a song isn't finished or it's, if it's not ready or you don't, if, you know, you're, you're not happy with it. I guess what I'm saying is there are moments that you are happy with it. And I feel like those are the moments you should run with because mm-hmm. then you might wake up the next day or the day after and you're like, Oh, wait, actually, no, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, if you're not happy with something, you're like, yeah, obviously I'm not against like, tweaking things or writing, you know, writing a song until you, you, you making a song that you're happy, you're happy with. It's not just like, Oh, I just wrote this. Okay. That's it. Can't change it. You know, <laughs> but it's, if you, it's just because I've had some experience with, with the girls and even myself where I will be really happy about something. And then the more you listen to it in different moods or different environments, like you start to change your mind about it, but that's just because you're, you know, you're, like like I said earlier, I feel like you just lose the plot mm-hmm. a little bit, and I don't know. I like capturing, I like capturing those the moments when you you first feel the joy about something you've created. I it's nice to hold across, on to that. Yeah, it comes across on this record too. Which, by the way, quick compliments on that solo record. Uh, oh, uh, thank you. I have the time because that was great as well. Thank uh, you. Did I? I, I don't know if I read this right, but was there a part of the writing process that was kind of by assignment? It wasn't by assignment. Um, it was more like there was, you know, uh, there are four of us and certain, you know, people will bring in certain ideas or certain songs and everybody will kind of just work. You know what I mean? Everybody mm-hmm. will work on it. It's like, oh, we, when we first started to record, we had like, you know, we had a little whiteboard and we made our list of the songs that you know, we're either working songs in, you know, in progress or work in progress or an idea that somebody had had that was, you know, either just acoustic, some guitar and vocals or bass and vocals or, you know, just a beat and some keyboard or whatever, anything that, that we had that we wanted to work on. We sort of, we made a list and then we kind of just went down the list of the songs and that's pretty much how we did it. It was, it was actually great. It was, there was a list, there were certain things. And then while people were working on certain things, other people would be working on other things at home. So it's like we were, you know, kind of attacking it from all angles. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting to hear. So we got the first single uh, with new song and I don't know, it's easy to say this is probably the catchiest thing you've ever done, you know, and especially for me working in radio land, you know, it's like, Oh wow, that's, that's a perfect radio song right there. And maybe that just comes naturally, but you know, you got to wonder as you guys have become more popular and, and as you've went along with every release, as a band should, and and hopefully does. I mean, does it ever become premeditated to any point to say, "Hey, it'd be nice if we could actually reach that level, and maybe we should write a song like that," or did that song just come as naturally as as any other? That song definitely. <clears throat> oh, maybe that's what you're talking about—an assignment. Oh, okay. So, yeah, now we're on yeah, the same page. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I was confused. I thought you meant, like, did we assign certain songs to, oh, it's to okay. one another? I, I liked your uh, other answer, too, so I'll still use that. <laughs> oh, okay, well. okay. <laughs> um, oh, so the assignments, okay. Um, that song was birthed out of pure love and pure joy, and it wasn't, it was sort of my interpretation of, of, a, a, um, okay, so our manager gave us an assignment, and it was sort of like, Hey, pick any song, pick a, you know, a modern day pop song and go home and write a song and see, you know, like it doesn't have to, you know, do whatever you want, whatever happens, just do it. I'm just curious. You know, he just sort of was like, let's see what happens, see what you guys do. And that's kind of cool because I'd never really, I've never really taken songwriting. I'd never really taken that approach when it came to songwriting. Mm -hmm. And whenever I enjoy a song, if I love a song or if I'm moved by a song or inspired by a song, it's my favorite song, whatever. If ever I write and I'm thinking about that song, it's never I'm thinking about how can I write a song like this. It's more how can I write a song that makes me feel the way that this song feels. So it's, you know, this song that I was I chose was Get Lucky by Daft Punk Mm -hmm. featuring Pharrell and Nile Rodgers. (laughs) Which is a great song. Which is a song. What? It's a great song. No, I love that song. I mean, I love that song. It's amazing. I love Daft Punk and I, I love Nile Rodgers and I love disco. And so that song... I I wrote that song and it was an instrumental version of that song. Mm -hmm. There were no vocals on it and I just written an instrumental and I had showed it to the girls and originally it was actually going to be a Jenny Lee song, but I, the girls had heard it and it was like, no, let's make this a war paint song. And so, you know, after about a year of sort of 
figuring out what we were going to do. The song was pretty much done. It had a guitar. It had every. It had every the instrumentation of it was was done. So there wasn't so much room. There really was only room for vocals. And even then, like the melodies were kind of already chosen. You know what I mean? There wasn't a whole lot of room to develop anything. So we sort of stripped back a few things. We kept the bass and the drums, and there were th- you know there were synths added. There was a synth added which Emily made out of her voice. Teresa added guitar. And then Stella did um, added drums on top of what was already there, but she definitely took a new it's like a whole new spin to what was going on, yeah. and made it hers for sure. Everybody made it theirs, which is great. We made it a war paint song, and then Emily and I worked on the vocals for a while, probably for about a year. It sort of there was some other things that we were uh, messing around with on the chorus and. Just at the end of the day, it was like this, you know, that new song. It had been made up when we were playing the show and we were getting ready to play a new song and Emily had introduced was introducing a new song and Stella and I were kind of jamming out. And so she just started riffing on new song and loved the melody so much that she remembered it for, she remembered it to record vocals for this track. It was like, it made, you know, it worked perfectly over the chorus. Yeah. So sort of a hybrid of how the song came together just as far as sort of taking things from here and there stripping back things that were already there and it took a minute and we were not we were just we took a minute and it was kind of one of those things where it was getting beaten beaten to the ground and I started to just think you know what okay it's not really going anywhere it's not happening it's not moving it's not happening so I was just like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back for myself and you knew do something else and then when it came time to recording I put it on the list and I was like let's have one more go at it because we don't have so much time right now and we can't we can't fuck off you know what I mean we can't whatever we do we're gonna have to just commit to so it was actually you know pretty amazing that it happened and it did actually happen really quickly when we worked on it it was like oh it was one of those things where we brought it back into our lives but seeing as we were on a time restraint it was kind of like okay boom go what are you going to put on it you know uh-huh. what are we singing what are we doing okay cool let's move on we have to because we've got six other things you know we've got six other songs that we have to record so um sorry that was sort of a long-winded That's answer okay. it's, it's um, a great story yeah and i and, and so you know you to kind of answer your question i was writing a song you know what i mean it was definitely oh with a I guess with a lighter, a, a lighter feel, a more, you know, dancier disco feel in mind. But that was definitely like, it wasn't like, oh, let me see, you know, let me try and write a song that's going to, that's going to make some money or let me try and write a song that's going to be accessible or that people are going to like. Like, definitely that's not what was happening. It was just like, oh, I'm going to write, you know, I want to write a dance track right. that makes me feel really good and that makes me really happy. And so that's sort of, that's where it came from. Yeah. I don't think we could write a song that, if we weren't feeling it and we weren't into it and it didn't, it just didn't feel authentic. I just don't feel like we would, I don't just don't think that we, we never be that band. You know, unless you're working in top 40 and your name's Max Martin or the Nashville, you know, country music machine. I mean, I, I, I get that sense from a lot of songwriters. Like if you just sit down and say, I want to write a hit, then you're just going to write the worst song that you've ever written. Totally. No, totally. I want to write a hit. And it's like, maybe that's a hit to you. But it's like, I don't know. It's almost like I don't know. Even new song. It's like, yeah, it's the most accessible, probably one of the most accessible things that we've ever written. But it's still weird. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? It's still a little, it's still a little like, still a little strange. And still, it's still very much war paint. And I feel like there's, as far as just being straightforward, and yeah, sitting down and writing a hit, like, God bless those people that can do that. That's an amazing, I think that's an amazing quality. It's like like I sit down and write music that I'm feeling that expresses how I'm feeling and that I like. And that's not always going to be, that's not always going to be for everyone, Mm -hmm. you know, but that's okay. Like that's, that's what, you know, that's our, that's just, I feel like that's, everything isn't for every, everything isn't for everyone. And if you, if you have that ability to kind of think outside of your box and go, hmm, what what can I do to cater to the likes of everyone else or the mind of seventeen year olds or whatever? <laughs> I mean, that's a, I think that's a wonderful, it's wonderful amazing. trait and quality to have. I don't think I embody that, but I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, I might be reaching something, uh, reaching for something that that isn't there on on this one, and especially with uh, so many different songwriters in the band. But as I'm listening to the whole album, I start to find sort of a lyrical thread that that ties it all together. 
and and I didn't exactly settle on what that is. It, I, I kind of can't. I feel like I can't close. And again, maybe it's just my interpretation, of course. But uh, it seems like there's a there's a I don't know a mantra to this record that basically says, "Whatever you throw at me, I'll be fine." Whatever you throw at me, I'll be fine. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, again, you know, writing with that's different actually people. pretty amazing. That's really deep. I like that. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe um, it's the beauty of your friendship because you know I got to point out. You know, the artwork, you're all right there represented, and you're standing together holding hands. There's a line in one song going, you know, I got my girls. Yeah. And there's a big team thing going on here, but that's what it seems like. Like, whoever's writing, like I said, I don't know who writes what lyrics or or how they come together, but it seems like when it all comes out, I don't, and, you know, maybe you all went through personal stuff on top of that, but it's like, everything's going to be okay. For sure. And that is really amazing. I actually think that's very beautiful that that's what you've taken from the album because it's at the end of the day, yes, that is certainly what you can equate to it. Maybe we're all saying and 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 more or less, you know, I would say an all around attitude from all of us, even just with with each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whatever we throw at each other will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> because of being you in a band. know, we've been in this. We've been in the van for a long time, and it's like we are in this together, and we're a team, and it's important to be reminded of that. And it also makes me really happy that that is that that's what that's what you that's what you take took from it. You know, that's yeah. a really sweet. It's a it's a it's a cool record all around. I mean, and there's so many good parts. It's like the, the closing track today, dear, is it, it is beautiful. Yeah, it yeah. is a gorgeous song. Emily wrote that song when she was she wrote that song when she was 18. Wow, that one's been hanging around. Yes, I know, and she's never put it on anything. She's, I mean, I think she only has, like, just demo recording of it. She never released it or anything. I mean, she's played it a few times live when, you know, growing up. But, yeah, I know, it's really nice that that song has a home. And I, it felt really, it felt right to put it on. Yeah. It felt right to put it on after, after, after all of the songs that were going on. It was a really nice treat. Because the album is pretty long, you know? Yeah. And... Well. <laughs> Unless it you're was, enjoying it, it doesn't feel long. <laughs> no, for sure. But I mean, it is. It's just. It. It. I think like when we were coming to you know sequence the album, or when we were sequencing the album, I think that there were some opinions about that after Above Control that it the album just felt done. It mm-hmm. was like, wow, what a be- this is great. That's a way great way to wrap it up, and that maybe putting on another song felt like a little bit too strenuous to the listener or for the listener like oh, okay we're really making them work over here but i was like you know i did i personally thought that it was actually it was a really nice touch to the album because everything was so go 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 and mo- you know mm-hmm. kind of upbeat and tempo and this was like a, a breath of fresh air it was just like okay now it's time to wind down <laughs> it's kind of like the cool down of a workout or something right i'm so glad you guys did was yeah. there any uh was there ever any uh thought of of um was it No Way Out and Riot? Were those ever yes. going to be a part of the uh, of the album? There were there's there were talks of there was um, there were talk of that there was talk of that yes, and I was I was happy I kind of was happy to do it because I actually felt like those those songs would have would have fit in just fine mm-hmm. on this album. I think they would have gone they would have gone actually pretty nicely in my opinion, but <laughs> um. We were we just had been writing more. We were just writing more stuff that it was like, okay, we're not going to make this. You know, we're going to put fourteen songs on the album. We don't need to, and we, you know, when you pre-order the album, you get a seven inch of No Way Out, and I'll start believing. And you, we can still have, a, you know, we'll still have a seven inch. Right. So those are the two singles, and they're separate. And I think that's cool too. Sort of. A they really- were released at such a different time, so yeah. it's like they don't need to be on this album. This album feels very. Other than having, you know, Today Dear, which is an old song, is very fresh and very new and very present and of the now. Yeah. So. Sort of a cool hearkening back to, you know, especially back in the 60s when you would do that, you'd release the single that wasn't a part of the album, but it was still all tied together. Yeah, totally. You know, so it's fun. And the it whole is- record's fun. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's very, there's a whole lot of emotions in here and sounds. And, and, and the, by the way, the sounds of it, like, I don't know how you guys find those sounds because if I play any of those instruments, they do not sound like that. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? What sounds? Just, uh, you know, the tones, your guitar the tones, tones and, okay. and all of this. Like, they're yeah. so inventive and unique and interesting. Like, even if you guys weren't singing and were just an instrumental band, it would still be a great record. 
you know there's yeah there's so totally cool i mean oftentimes our intro songs instrumentally are like they're not i don't want to say better but they're they're i mean i really i enjoy listening to our songs instrumentally mm-hmm. and it's you know obviously we're you know our music is is pretty, i mean actually you know what i wouldn't say that i think it's pretty even as far as instru- instrumentation and vocals go um, but we love to jam. We love to, you know, we do that live. We love to just like meditate with each other, riff mm-hmm. out and go for it. So I think that it's, sorry, I just lost my train of it's thought. Okay. Well, what I was just going to say is that I, it's, uh, what, what you just said is just, even if you didn't have vocals, it would be great. And I feel like we agree. Mm-hmm. It's like, we want to, you know, we want to give it space and we want to give the instrumentation air to breathe and like, the instrumental versions of our songs as well. Oh, God. Sorry, that was a hard one to get out. It's completely fine. I'm tired. I'm if, you, if you guys ever wanted to do the uh, the hip-hop thing and release just the uh, the instrumental version of an album, it's, um, that'd be cool. Yes, yeah. we definitely have been talking about that. And, oh, cool. yeah, that we've actually been talking about that, which is cool. I'm glad we're all on the same page here. I know. <laughs> I'll sign off on it. It's fine. Great. All right. Well, that's all I got. And I really, Sweet. really appreciate it. So that was fun talking. And, yeah, uh, fun talking with you, too. Thanks for taking the time. No, thank you for taking the time. And I hope, you know, you recover very quickly, uh, jet lag and all. Uh, I have to. So I've got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, looking forward to the official release. And we'll see you out there on the road. All right. Sounds good. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye.